Hey folks, welcome back to another Acorn On Demand podcast as they're evolving to be here. We're looking to put these out every so often just to inform the marketplace, really, potential ERP buyers, uh, potential, you know, Sage users of what's available, how we can help sustain and empower your business growth and uh, bring real nice front end applications to retain and attract top talent in the organization. This is all demonstrated at our events uh, last week in Belfast and Dublin. One of the fresh guys and you guys on the block looking at me right now and looking at you guys right now is uh, Adam, who I'm going to introduce you to, and he's going to tell us a bit about himself and what he thought of the event and who you guys are. Uh, Adam, over to you. Thanks, Johnny. Yeah, no, it was really good. Thanks for having me on the podcast. Um, yeah. yeah, the event was brilliant. It was a really, it was probably the, well, the second event I'd been out to this year. So one, mm-hmm. it was good just to get out and about and meet new faces. But two, it was really good to just to see the, the Acorn community and our network as well. Uh, really good, insightful speakers, took a lot of value away from the overall presentation structure. And it's, yeah, something I'd highly recommend to uh, Acorn customers and also prospective businesses just to get out and attend these events in the future. Brilliant. And, and tell me, us, what were some of your key takeaways or what were potential buyers, prospects or customers who are maybe completely alien to stage and its capabilities? What, what were some of your key takeaways from it, Adam? You know, from speaking yeah. with others. I think the, the biggest one for me is is just how much of a, a network is around the Sage um, community. Uh, there's so many options from procurement to uh, business intelligence to automation um, that really can, there's a real strong network that can be applied to the, the core Sage model, which means that it can open up so many opportunities to, to drive businesses forward or improve efficiencies. Uh, I mean, yeah. I was aware of a few, but yeah, just what is out there is, is really, really good and remarkable. Yeah, it's, it is creating a whole community, as you say, and that collaborative community approach, I believe, is what's going to help small, mid-sized organisations who we, who we are, who see is actually facilitate come into this digital economy. Um, and and what, what part do you see focus playing in the whole picture then, Adam? What, what, what do you guys do? What where do you play a role? I think for for us, we are uh, we're a kind of a an anchor for a lot of businesses that run Sage because often there's the there's a lot of data that flies around in general in the day to day operations. But where we yeah. see ourselves helping is we can we can connect to a, a whole cluster of the Sage products and give a real easy way to look report from high level right down to transaction. Um, with a really simplistic nature of just clicking a couple of buttons, it's not going to create any bottlenecks in the process, but alleviate a lot uh, along the way. Right. Okay. And what are the common pains that they're actually solving here? You know, it's you know, click on a button, stuff's great. You know, but what's the reality? Yeah, the the reality is, I suppose, is that everyone is using Excel. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, we joke and we laugh. We, we, everybody is, and um, and that's not a bad thing. It's just what Excel does, it presents that foundation for businesses to operate. But what we do is we we give businesses tools to, to be less reliant on Excel so that yeah. more time is utilised automating the processes that can be automated. But we, did, we looked at some research recently where we found that a lot of, I think it was as much as 40% of overall finance departments reporting processes could be automated um, freeing up at least 50 percent of their, their total job responsibilities and when yeah. you look at it that way the impact that can have on a business um, and yeah. having your analyst your financial analyst driving the business forward rather than doing cumbersome tasks it's such yeah. huge opportunities and with tools like focus you can you can do that without having to apply a lot of resources to maintain and, and get to that level 100 percent now uh, i see that as a competitive difference difference there so i mean you know, what what is making this difference to all our competitive tools on the marketplace that they offer this service yeah so um we're what well, there's a few things that makes focus difference but uh, taking it back to the very high level is that our mission is to help our customers feel good about data so yeah. 
we, we get the basics right. We pull in from all data sources um, and serve it up in a way that is usable on a daily basis. Now, what makes it so unique is that there's a lot of BI products out there. And with ours, it's the case that we give you, I almost joke, it's like the iPhone of data. You go into focus, you look for what you need to do, you've got your action points, and then you go and do it. You don't step yeah. away from focus because yeah. at the end, that's, that's what you want. You want to be served your insights when you need it and then create actions and go and do it, actually do it. Yeah, and there's, there's so you know, is the focus then become on data entry and capturing that data correctly for it to be presented back right then? That that so the the, the power of the humans really enabling that data entry uh, a lot easier, but those outputs a lot slicker in real time fashion, almost. If I'm hearing you right, Adam. Yeah, what we do is we, we empower people to make those decisions quicker. Yeah. So whether you're looking at sales, financial data, um, budgeting processes, we just give you the tools to make your decisions far quicker and less with less pain spent in getting the resources to that point of making decisions. We take a lot yeah. of that heavy lifting out. So actually, the whole feel good around data comes from the time that you will get back and the ability to do things that you you kind of restricted within your roles at the moment because of processes and, and systems in place. And if I'm sitting back as a customer listening to you and going, right, there's a lot of data flowing through my business here. Data is king now, you know, not cash anymore. And I spoke about this on a blog recently. I spoke about this at an event. You hear she is talking about it all the time in terms of technology being deployed. Those digital transactions, that data is king. Okay, you know what? There's no getting away from that now. So it loops me back around to think, and I'm a customer, and I'm scaring myself with the amount of data flowing through my business. How how quick can you guys deploy something and show me that what I want, and configure that to what I want? How quick can that be done? I, you know, this is all about time for me. Come, you know, do talk to me about it, prove it. Yeah, so there's there's a, there's numerous with, with customers that are looking at what we call the future customers that are looking to come to focus. There's we can turn around very quick proof of concept demonstrations where we pull in a small subset of your data and turn it around within a couple of weeks, a week to a couple of weeks, even days in some cases. Mm -hmm. uh, full scale imp takes more time. Um, Sage fifty customer in particular, we can turn around very very quickly um, within hours because mm -hmm. we've got solutions in place. Say yep. 200 businesses, because they, they come in all shapes and sizes, complexities, we can still turn them around fairly quickly. But what we, we pride ourselves on doing within our IMP process is making sure that what comes pre-configured from the end of that IMP process, whether it's four weeks getting hands on with your data or 12 weeks in total as, a, as the overall process, is that you're actually flying by the end of it. You're, you're challenging us on what you can do, what more you can do with yep. the process rather than what what's going in and what can't be done it's what what's the next stage in terms of getting the most out of the product absolutely uh, and it does lower those uh sort of post consultancy costs or uh you know in-house resources to configure and all those reports the time saving would be f phenomenal uh, i imagine you know what does it look like you know if i if i was to you know it'd be a customer prospect first thing i'm going to ask well, show me what it looks like so oh, that's got a look and feel of it. Can you show us that now, Adam? Yeah, definitely. I can I can certainly show you that. So um, let me just share my screen. I'll give you a real quick overview of what it looks like in a very simplistic fashion. So, um, I mean, just before we jump into that, I mean, just to refocus it, we are completely business planning and analytics. So we, we started yeah. off 20 years ago as purely just business intelligence. But... Mm -hmm. Through customer demand um, and, and inquisitiveness, they asked us, can you apply your formula to management accountancy reports and then the budgeting process? And 30 customers grew and grew, grew and grew. And we've got more, way more than that now. We've now developed a dedicated products across the whole business and planning and analytics um, space, which is quite exciting for us. What that looks like on a day-to-day -day basis, without getting too technical, is that you've got nice visualizations that are pulled directly from Sage, the Sage suite, um, across sales, stock and financial information. So various widgets, gauges, um, company snapshot information. But what makes it really fun is the fact that it's not opening up multiple dashboards and then pushing it into Excel or creating graphs. It's a couple of clicks to move things and get in. 
but then at any point you can then start working your way through the context of your data so looking at in this case uh, one product class moving into another product uh, industry type or customer type and then really start to drill down and get the context of what's going on and this isn't just across sales data or stock data this is also looking at from financial so looking make sure your trial balance is equal looking at your profit and loss variance looking at if it's branch cost center or divisional breakdown and applying exactly the same formula just looking at one particular cost center or branch and then again just letting the the dashboard and focus do the heavy lifting doing all the calculations and serving up the information so as you as a in this case a cfo you can make those decisions quicker and then yeah. going beyond that you've got the the fun layer where you want to dive into the context so you've got this analytical layer where you can start dragging and adding in more context to your your overall reporting um, yeah. and then in nesting views or even to something simple as just customizing the view so you've got a a very a different statement structure um again all done with a couple couple of clicks a drag and drop methodology where you can then um start customizing the statements and modes yeah right and uh, this is uh i assume a full SaaS solution yep completely cloud-based so you could be sat on the beach in the bahamas at yep. month end, just checking your ratios checking the calculations and yeah and, and then being able to make those decisions across the board yep so you've got a, a true cloud connection a cloud connected application in your financial management uh software being your, your core platform c is 200 cloud yep. connected completely which is deployed on it can be deployed on your or, or or on your premise and it's connected straight to focus which is a a a, a SaaS solution sitting on the beach drinking your cocktails getting your results in real time yeah exactly it's it's focus good. focus with focus exactly focus <laughs> a, with focus a, a, a nice a nice play on words i guess the guy that found it must have been named phil or something was it <laughs> yeah it's a i mean it's a it's a it's a focus i mean it is a cool business we we were yeah. growing from uh from our CEO starting this, coming to the to the UK with an idea of wanting to make analytics easy for people and yeah. having grown globally across multiple continents and multiple product categories, we still stay true to, again, just making people feel good about data. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. No, I'm sure, I'm sure it's a pleasure to have this technology to put out there to CFOs and that community of small mid-sized businesses financial controllers directors accountants whatever the case may be you know in the how fast this economy is going uh, and how fast digital transactions are going to make things move you really you really are empowering the role of the human what shades his values are and it falls in the name of acorns values are which has happened to sustain and empower business business growth uh, and change and change, you know, attracting that talent. You know, if I'm a 21 year old, 22 year old business owner, a startup, you know, e commerce, you know, you get all these e commerce companies coming out of the woodwork nowadays and they're turning over 5 million in 10 weeks or something. You know, you, you get the point, they're coming up out of, out of nowhere. You know, if, and if you're able to get this, you know, from a talent perspective on your phone, and just having that fed through the Sage Business Cloud, it's phenomenal. It's it's truly transformational. And I, I'm 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 so glad I came across companies like yourselves and, and other guys out there to to offer this, you know, because small small mid sized business communities need it. That's my closing thoughts, Adam. You have any for yourself? Yeah, I I'd, I'd, I'd echo the same. I think um the thing is with data and in general it, it can be whether you're uh, an established business or a, a fast-growing startup it is often an overthought and actually when it's time to consider it it's very difficult to make those decisions but things like focus just help with that to help you scale your business because it you could be turning over one million you could be turning over 500 million there's it's always good to have tools that can make you and empower teams make decisions a lot quicker um, and that's what we're, we're all about. 
hundred percent, but they all all require a level of investment as well, Adam. You know, uh, what well, you know, any idea what that investment would kind of look like, or is that worth more of a one-on-one conversation? Yeah, yeah, it's a good, it's a really good question. It, it's the the true answer is how long is a piece of string. But the the beauty of, of BI business planning and analytics is that your return investment could be substantial dependent on the operational standpoint of the business whether it's looking to generate more revenue whether it's to improve cost per head whether it's just becoming more efficient with supply chain management and efficiency or whether it's just freeing yeah. up your finance team to actually be focused on generating yeah. profit across the business it's yeah it is very much a it's probably best to have a one-to-one conversation around it um, because it looks different for everybody, but it's something yeah. that we love exploring with with future customers. Uh, end of the day, it doesn't matter what the investment levels look like. There's a cost benefit to it. Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's good. Well, and and to back that point, you know, on a one to one basis, then how 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 do we get in touch with you? You know, how 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 do our, our customers, if they want, to come to you directly, which is always their choice. You know, can always come through ourselves, but if they want to reach out to you directly. Adam, how how do they go about it? Yeah, the best. There's various ways you can get hold of us. Um, probably the best channel is via our website. I'd say um, for me in particular, um, the best ways to reach me is probably I'd say via my contact details. Which if I just flash those up on the screen, um, yeah. you've reached me on my mobile uh, or via email, and then I'll be more than happy to yeah just have a conversation with you, just informal chat about your data requirements, and see if we can help. Brilliant, brilliant. And, you know, of course, you ever want to have a, a wider conversation, scope out what else is on the market and, 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 and weigh it up against you know, focus, for example, you know, come and have a conversation with me directly. Adam, it's been a real pleasure having you on the, the, the call today. It's great to get to know you guys uh, and look forward to, uh, to, to helping, helping people out here as much as we can. Much appreciate. Thank you. Brilliant. Thanks for your time, Johnny. Always a pleasure.